an extraordinary story about a young man who many years ago visited Prague. What he found there were thousands of refugees. Hi everybody, it's Chris Kandai here and I'm at the London Film Festival. This is the red carpet gala premiere of the film One Life, featuring the incredible Sir Anthony Hopkins. This film tells the story of Sir Nicholas Winton, who organised one of the first trains to evacuate children from Czechoslovakia to the UK. It's something that's known as the Kinder Transport. And I'm so excited because one of my dear friends, John Fieldsend, is coming. He was on that train with his brother. He remembers saying goodbye to his parents through the window of the train. I remember my mother taking a photograph of my brother and I with our father and then they took us down to the local little town railway station. They put us on a train. As the train was about to leave, my mother took her wristwatch off and passed it through the window to me and simply said, this is for you to remember us by. We are working to evacuate these children by train to safety in Britain. Why are you doing this, Mr. Winton? Because I may be able to do something about it. I must. I really want you to see this film. It's incredibly well made. I met so many people that knew Sir Nicholas personally, and they were just astounded by the likeness that Anthony Hopkins brought to that role. When I watched it last night, I was surrounded by the ancestors of those who were on the kinder transport. I met their sons and daughters. I met their grandchildren. And there was a, a really important moment at the end of the film. The director came onto the stage and he asked if there's anyone in the room who is alive today because of Nicholas Winton, could you please stand? And all the people around me stood, including John Fieldsend, who was on that train himself. And you could just feel the audience just recognizing the significance. The title of the film, One Life, Save One Life, Save the World, Nicholas Winton didn't just save 669 lives. There are over 6,000 people today that are alive because of his actions. I understood only really when the children, now adults, stood up. Yeah. And then you thought that person yeah. was there because he made an effort to do something yeah. back then. For me as a campaigner, as somebody who's passionate as you are in helping refugees and vulnerable people, it gave me great hope that what we do today will have generational impact. We're not just helping people from Ukraine and Afghanistan and Syria and Palestine. We can help generations of people into the future. My hope for the film is that it will help us to be sympathetic to people who are fleeing for safety, who are the victims of persecution, war and horrible things. And that a better understanding of what they've been through should make us in this country more sympathetic to them and more welcoming. These are not invaders, these are not the enemy. These are people, some of whom would like to find safety in this country. And why shouldn't we offer that safety? Look at the people we have here today. Look what they contributed to our society. I think we need to be far more generous, far more open-minded and see the possibility of those new people in our workplace, in our schools and in our societies. Really. Every one person to make a difference, you don't need to wait for someone else to organize, you see something needs to be done, step in and do it. That was Nicky Winter. You have a lot of faith in ordinary people. Because I'm an ordinary person. Can I ask, is there anyone in the audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? Can you imagine what it's like to have to flee your home, your family and friends and seek safety and sanctuary elsewhere? That's the experience of 43 million children who've had to leave their homes because of war, terror or famine. I believe that art can help people connect and empathise with that experience so those of us who've never had to lose those things can help other people get the support and welcome that they need. The No Place Like Home art competition is your chance to be part of changing those minds and hearts. We'd love to see your artwork or your poetry. So if you've got pencils or pens or paintbrushes or crayons or charcoal or even a graphic design program, 
we'd love to see your pieces of art. Or maybe you're better with words. We'd love to see your short poems help people connect with the experiences of refugee children around the world. Refugee and displaced children face very different circumstances. Some have been living in refugee camps since they were born. Others have been forced to flee their homes as teenagers. I came to the UK as a refugee two years ago. I am grateful for the support I've had from my new school friends. But I really miss my friends and family in Ukraine. I hope that one day it will be safe for me to go home. I can't even imagine what that is like, as I have lived in this refugee camp in Kenya since the day I was born. My favorite part of day is drinking tea at bedtime. It reminds me of my home in Afghanistan. When I'm older, I want to help build a world where children like me don't have to flee their homes to find somewhere safe to live. We're delighted to be working with the British Library and our panel of celebrity and expert judges to find the best piece of artwork in the United Kingdom. And that will be proudly displayed in the British Library during National Refugee Week. You can help change the minds and hearts of our nation and maybe even the rest of the world. So please enter it. We're looking forward to thousands of entries from across the United Kingdom. So good luck and I look forward to seeing what you produce. Young people are doing brilliant things everywhere these days. They're making history on the football pitch, at the Olympics and on the tennis courts. They're starring in blockbuster movies and storming the music industry. They're speaking up about the environment, about period poverty, about the impact of vaping and the injustices facing refugees, about the climate emergency, about the right to education and so much more. Young people are doing brilliant things all over social media, using their influence fearlessly and outrageously. I love this revival of youth power. But sadly, their voice is not being heard in politics, and I believe that needs to change. It's time to reverse that cycle and allow young people to be heard. Unfortunately, politicians aren't getting younger, they're getting older. This means that policies are moving further and further away from the interests of young people. We need to change that and make sure that young people are involved in our political system. And then our politicians have to sit up and pay attention and listen to what young people want. With a surge in youth voting, you can shift the political attention onto the issues you care about. Maybe you'll use your vote as an act of protest. Maybe you'll use your vote as an act of celebration. Maybe you'll use your vote because you're upset that your grandparents have to wait so long to get a medical appointment. Maybe you'll use your vote because you're concerned that your school's concrete is crumbling around you. Maybe you'll use your vote because you're worried you won't be able to afford to rent or buy a house. Maybe you'll use your vote to speak up about issues of the environment or how refugees are treated. Whatever you're gonna use your vote for, I am certain that you're gonna do it to make the world a kinder and fairer place. And in order to get started on that, you need to register. And so on the 16th of April, me and a few friends are putting on a special live event at six form colleges around the UK. We better talk you through the process of registering to be a voter. You need to know your national insurance number before you come, but then if you're allowed to bring your phone into school on the 16th of April, you'll be able to register to vote. We think if thousands of young people do that on the same day, that will send ripples throughout our political system. Our politicians will have to sit up and take notice. They'll have to stop talking at you and start listening to you. So we'd love for you to join us on the 16th of April. Let's get as many of you registering to vote as we can and let's change the way the politics works in our country so it'll be a fairer and just a place for all of us. See you soon.
Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Krish Kandaya, and you've joined the GiveNX Live Voter Registration Day, and we're so pleased that you're here. I run a national charity called the Sanctuary Foundation, and I'm passionate about the UK providing welcome to refugees who need to come to our shores. But I'm so excited that I'm in England, but I've got a very good friend in Scotland that's joining us. Good morning, Laura. Nice to see you. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura and I am based up in Scotland and I spend my time being a student doing a PhD at university. And I'm also an environmental campaigner, passionate about all things to do with nature, sustainability and how that impacts people. Well, you've heard what we're passionate about. We want to know what you're passionate about. And in order to take part, we're gonna do a little interactivity. We're gonna put a QR code up on the screen. If you point your phone at it uh, on camera mode, it will take you to our live bit of interactivity. And uh, the exciting thing about this is it's completely anonymous, right? We don't know where or who you are, uh, but you can tell us what you think. And as a bit of fun, let's find out where in the UK you are. It's just going to put a dot on the map. We won't know your address or anything like that. But let's find out where people are based. If, you, uh, if you've managed to make it in, give us a little heart symbol. And that will let us know that you're in. Oh, there you go. Very there good. Go. Someone down in the southwest. Very nice. Um, oh, yeah. Someone from the middle of the ocean. Either oh, there we go. Some people further up north. Come on up to Scotland. Let's see how many people we've got closer to me. There we go. <laughs> Good to see some people watching from oil rigs and boats in the, uh, <laughs> Out in the, in the ocean. It is hard to get an accurate thing, isn't it? Very good. Excellent. Oh, yeah, we're doing well in the Midlands. That's fantastic. Um, no one in Ireland yet. We'd love to see if there were any, anyone in Scotland. Last time we did this, we had an early morning session and there was a lot of people in London, but actually we're seeing a bit of a better spread today. So it's lovely to see you. And lots you of are... hearts and thumbs up. People are obviously yeah, tuning in. Very good. You're very, very welcome. All right. We, we have another, a little bit more taxing question for you uh, coming up in a second. Uh, are you ready? All right. We want you to pick an emoji. How do you feel about the way that the country is being run at the moment? Uh, what are you seeing, Laura? Well, I'm seeing probably quite similar to what we had early this morning. The poo emoji is coming out as a bit of a favourite. Some people feeling a bit unwell, maybe, and, and a few not sure. Um, nobody has hit the heart yet, though. No one's hit the heart yet. Oh, that may be the first one there. Maybe one. Some people are more accurate than others. Well done for trying. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? A lot of people not very happy with how the country's being run. Well, this is your chance to put that right. Uh, today is all about National Voter Registration Day. So happy Voter Registration Day to you. Um, let's see what comes up next. What's our next question for you? Rearrange this list to show which issues are most important to you. Uh, so you can choose any of these ones and you can move them up or down to see which ones you care about the most. Now, Laura, you mentioned that you're very passionate about the environment. Where does that passion come from? I mean, we're speaking to lots of people who are coming to the end of their school time, and I just fell in love with the subject geography. And as you learn that, you learn all the great stuff and the beautiful stuff, but you also learn that we're not doing very well in terms of sustainability. And also, I'm a Christian, and I believe that, you know, God put us on this planet to care for it. And so I'm really passionate about looking after it and the impacts that has on people. And I can see as well that protecting the environment is popping up there. So I know that's something a lot of young people are really, you know, concerned about. And, and that is certainly something that's political. So talking today about getting registered to vote, that is something that's so important because a lot of this stuff to do with the environment and all these other issues that we can see on screen are things that we can vote about, which is fantastic. That's right, brilliant. Well, thanks for, for sharing your passion. My passion is coming last. I feel a little bit like my football team, Liverpool. We're not having a good uh, end of season. So what, what's happened to support for refugees? Who, who knows? Maybe we'll convince you uh, to care more about that as time goes on. All right, let's try the next question. Do you think your vote really can make a difference? Let's see. Oh, I'll, I'll be okay. interested. I'll give you a compare and a contrast with this morning's figures in a minute, but we're, let's see what you think. Pretty 50 50. That's yeah, quite the nose are kind of edging it at the moment. We yeah. want to persuade you that if you vote, you really can shape things. Governments can't get elected unless people vote for them. 
And sometimes these elections are very close, aren't they? Sometimes it's only a few hundred or thousand votes that makes the difference. So uh, getting you guys registered could change the way the elections turn out. But um, OK, at the moment, I think the no's have it. How about the next one? What's our next question for you? Do you feel that politicians take your concerns as young people seriously? Uh, this Ooh. one's a little bit more definitive, isn't it, so far? Yeah. A uh, huge number of people think politicians are not listening to young people. Well, if you're in a school anywhere in the country, you have a local MP. And I've spoken to a lot of MPs who say they love getting invited to school. So you could have a school hustings. You could invite your local representatives to come in and share their passions. What are they going to do if they get elected? They need your vote. And so they could engage with you or you could write to them or you could follow them on Twitter and ask them some questions. But there you go. Overwhelmingly, no, people don't think they're politicians. Yeah, that's clear. Good. All right. Last question, I think. Have you decided how you would vote in a general election? Do you know already which party you would vote for? Uh, I'm not going to ask you which one. That's up to you. But have you decided already? Oh, this one's looking quite close as well. It is, isn't it? Now, remember, you can't vote unless you register, and that's what we're going to do next. But it's interesting, isn't it? The politicians who you don't think are listening to maybe ought to listen to you because a lot of you haven't decided who you're going to vote for. So now's the time for them to lean in. Fantastic, everybody. Thanks for playing uh, that bit of interactivity. I'm so pleased that the tech works. Sometimes it all goes a bit wrong. So we're very, very happy that you were able to uh, communicate with us. Now, I'm so pleased to invite my next guest up. His name is Mete Caban. He is the CEO of My Life, My Say, and he's the one um, pulling together National Voter Registration Day. He's had a busy day. He's been in the media, loads of bits of press coming. Mete, welcome to you. Happy Voter Registration Day. Hey everyone, happy National Voter Registration Day. Thanks so much for, for being here with us. And it's incredible to see so many schools uh, engaged in this process and see so, so many young people who are registering to vote. Um, so well, I am here. Can you talk to us through. You. Yeah, how do we do it? Yeah, so I'm your vote registration guide. Uh, hopefully I can <laughs> do justice for that, uh, for that role. Um, so essentially, registering to vote is really important. Um, just quickly before you scan the QR code, there's more than 4.3 million people who are currently missing from the electoral roll, meaning that they won't have a voice in the next election. And it's not just about uh, having a voice, but it also helps you with lots of other things like your credit rating, securing the mobile phone contract, whether you're trying to rent a home, all those important things that you need to do in your day-to-day -day, um, as you move into different transition points in your life. So you'll see a QR code right across on your screen. So if you pull out your phone and you scan the QR code, um, it will take you to the government website um, so that should take you to the government website now. And what will happen is you essentially see a register to vote page from gov.uk. Uh, you will scroll down and it will simply say start now. It's a very quick uh, process. Uh, it will ask you for some very basic uh, information. So we have a step guide that I will show you on the screen uh, as we move forward. Uh, the first is uh, it will ask you where you live. Um, so you simply click if you live in England or Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, you click on which one you do and you click continue. Uh, I'll ask you for your nationality. Um, you can vote in local elections uh, if you are from a different nationality as well, if you're from the Commonwealth or European and you have a settled status uh, over here as well. So you simply click uh, which one you are and you move forward and then you click your date of birth. Again, very simple. So I'll be doing mine together with yourself, uh, selves, and then you move forward to continue. It'll ask you for your name. Simply put your name, including any middle names uh, that you do have and then you move forward uh, and then it will continue to ask you around whether you change the name. Uh, so you need to sort of just indicate, no, if you haven't changed your name or you don't have to say as well. So you don't have to answer that one uh, if you don't want to. And then here's an important bit. It will ask you for your national insurance number. Uh, in order to complete your, uh, your voter registration, you do need your national insurance. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't know where to find your national insurance number, you can still complete it. There is a button there that says that to you. What you will ne need to then do is you'll need to then take a, your national insurance number after you found it to the local town hall and to the local electoral office, um, and they will be able to complete it for you uh, thereafter. So you simply click your, you put your uh, um, national insurance number. So I'm just doing mine now, and then you click continue, and then it'll take you to the next uh, section. So if we just move on to the next step guide on the screen, 
fantastic. Um, so if you're all following me, and I've lost connection on my phone, so I've lost it over there. So I'm going to be moving on on the screen. So we'll ask you for details, uh, including your address, uh, if you've moved anywhere uh, recently, um, and it's pretty straightforward uh, from there on. Um, whilst I've got you all here, um, it should probably only take you about a couple of minutes to, to finish the, the, the registration. It will also ask you a question about whether you want to apply for a postal vote. Um, applying for a postal vote is very important uh, because even if you intend to vote in person, you could still apply for a po postal vote and you could take your, your postal vote to the polling station. The reason why it's important to, to register for a postal vote is because sometimes it is the case where essentially, you know, you may be busy on the day and something may come up or you may have to travel for work or you may have an emergency and therefore you will lose the ability to vote if you haven't registered for a postal vote in time. So I always encourage people to register for a postal vote, even if you intend to vote in person, the ballot will come to you via post. You'll fill it out. You'll take it to the polling station with your ID, and then you'll be you'll be able to hand that in and to to to, to be able to um, cast your your vote. So I think I always encourage people to make sure that you vote early um, and you register for a post of vote. The other thing, quick thing, I'll just say before I hand back over to to Krish, uh, is that make sure you have a valid form of identification. If you literally put on Google voter ID, electoral commission, it will tell you what forms of ID you can take with you to vote. If you don't have a valid form of ID on that list, you can apply for a voter ID certificate. And the deadline for that is on the 19th uh, of April. And you just literally, again, go on Google and you put voter ID certificate and it will come up with a voter registration uh, uh, link. But I'll hand back over to Grish. Thanks, Grish. Oh, great job, Mete. Thanks for guiding us through that. Hopefully hundreds of people around the country have now registered to vote. If you have, congratulations, you've started your route into democracy and we look forward to you using your voice well. Uh, we're so pleased we've got a special guest with us, uh, fresh from Woman's Hour. She's just been on Radio 4 and uh, let me introduce you to Sharon Gafka. Sharon, good morning. Well, good morning. Is it still morning? Yeah, it is. I've lost track of the day already. Hey, look, you're in my favourite coffee shop, Pret. They, they work <laughs> mostly with us on refugees, but other coffee shops are available. Um, Sharon, some of the people watching today will recognise you from Love Island and might be surprised that you're coming to six forms around the country to talk about democracy. Where does your passion for democracy come from? Yes, it's um, quite a weird transition i guess if you don't know much about my background but pre um appearance on love island i was actually a civil servant for six and a half years i worked in government operations and policy including brexit and actually covid response so um very heavily involved in politics ever since I was younger. Um, I'm also the child of first and second generation immigrants. Um, and both of them, both of the home countries of my parents have quite a turbulent time with, with um, politics and democracy. And I saw how that shaped their lives and how that shapes the country now. Um, and how much isn't being done for young people or young women. And ever since I was 13, I was very interested in politics. I did citizenship at GCSE, I did politics at A-level. Um, and went to work and then after Love Island you know you get thrown lots of different opportunities but I found that none of them really aligned with me and none of them really gave me longevity in something that I loved so obviously natural for me to return into politics but to use my new platform where you know a lot of young people are very heavily engaged in Love Island so why not take that love of Love Island and voting in Love Island and put that to the polling station. Fantastic, Sharon, and thank you for using your platform so well. And I know how passionate you are about helping young women and girls get the rights that they deserve. So we're really inspired by your work there. We, we have someone else who's very passionate about democracy joining us. Her name is Sophia, and she's got a few questions for you and the rest of our panel. Sophia, we're, we're old friends. We've worked together a lot. Could you tell people watching just a little bit of your story of how you came to the United Kingdom. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Sofia. Uh, I'm from Ukraine and uh, I came to UK because of war in my country and um, now uh, we are fighting to protect our democracy and a couple of days ago I turned uh, 18 and I'm so excited that I have ability to vote in Ukraine because it's really important. So I really want to ask you why do you think many people in the UK do not vote? That is a great question, Sophia. You know, people are dying in Ukraine 
for the sake of democracy, for the ability to choose their own government. And yet, young people, not just young people, but many people across the UK don't even bother voting. Laura, what do you think? Why, why do people not vote when it's such yeah. a precious thing? Yeah, I think it's a huge question. I think partly because our democracy isn't at risk at the moment. So we sort of take it for granted. You know, we forget how special it is to be able to vote. And sometimes we lose interest. We might get apathetic. But also going back to the Menti board that we did, a lot of people did the shrug. You know, it can be confusing. It can be complex. And that's why we've obviously done today to help show people what that first step is in registering. But there are a lot of barriers that definitely come into play when, when we you're so right i just went to see that movie civil war that's on in the cinemas at the moment imagining a civil war breaking out in america and, and it reminded me again we cannot take our democracy for granted we need to use our vote while we've got it what's your next question sophia um what should someone do if for example they unsure for who to vote for oh sharon what do you think lots of young people in our little mentimeter didn't know which way to go how should they go about finding out who to vote for? Um, you know, a lot of young people that I speak to say that they are, there's a lot of information out there, very accessible information. You don't know necessarily what to listen to. So my advice to young people or anybody that is unsure on how to vote is, you know, think about the top five topics or top three topics that are really important to you. You know, I saw that environment was particularly important to young people. And then look at the political parties that are available on your ballot paper or in your constituency and look at their manifestos on those particular areas and which one resonates with you the most because then you're, that's kind of a little easier guideline and it makes politics a little bit more palatable. Um, you know, economics isn't my strong point, so it's not necessarily something I'm gonna dive straight into, but there are other issues that are really important to me and that's how I vote. That's really helpful, isn't it? I, I don't think we're always gonna find a political party that ticks every box that we're concerned about. So I like Sharon's idea that you might pick the top three or four that matter to you and then see which party aligns with that. You need to do some research to do that. And, and sometimes we listen to other people's opinions about politicians. I want to encourage you to go straight to the source. So go to the manifestos, go to your local MPs, uh, Twitter page or website, see who the other candidates are and make your own mind up. This is important that you decide, not your family, not your peer group, but you make the call. Sophia, I think you've got another question for us. Yes, and the last question, how can we encourage more people to vote? I think it's really important. You are right. Uh, let's start with Laura and then hear from Sharon on that. I think we just need to make it really normal. And the first thing you can do is go away and say, hey, parents, friends, neighbours, I was at this event today at school and here is what we learned, I registered to vote. And I think it's just about making it normal. And it can be hard sometimes to be that person to stand up and say, I'm really interested in politics. I'm going to ask these questions. But the more we make it normal, the more people will get to encourage to do that. Yeah, I, I definitely echo um, Laura's comments. But I think as well as making it not seem as boring as it should be. You know, um, for me, when I first went to, I think I voted for the first time just after I was 18 or just before I was 19. And my friends and I actually made it a group trip to the polling station because we all had the same um, local polling booth. So, we, you know, not to make it boring, we kind of made it as a fun day out and one of the stops as we would do to anywhere else. Um, and I think as well is that um, I think there's a lot of onerous on people like us or older people to empower young people. When I was in school, you know, the current administration were around just before I started my GCSEs and there were so many young people talking about politics, but not nobody was really empowering us to take that outside of the classroom and take that to the streets or onto instagram so i definitely think trying to make it a bit more social is definitely one way to encourage people fantastic well thank you so much sophia we're so grateful that you joined us and la scava prossimo welcome to the uk you're already making a positive difference in our country so we're so grateful to have you here thank you to sharon and for using your voice to speak up and laura great job today hosting and all, all blessing to you in the work that you're doing for the environment. If today you registered to vote, you've done something really important. You started a journey and we're so excited that you've done that. We'd love it if you spread a vision for people using their voice to make our country as hospitable and kind and compassionate as it can be. Let's make a difference in the world. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon and uh, happy voting when the time comes.